talking about risk, a lot of people, um, when they think about insurance, they think about like kind of this like stodgy, sweaty accountant with giant glasses who are a little bit nervous and constantly writing things down. They, they kind of think of insurance as pretty much the opposite of risk. But insurance companies actually have some very interesting risks that other companies might not face necessarily. So, what kind of risks risks are there when you invest in an insurance company? So there's a lot of risks you wouldn't think about. Um, this year, a big one with property and casualty insurers, more specifically car insurers, is that people are driving more because gas prices are low. And because of that, they're getting in much more accidents. And actually, the cost with each accident has been going up this year, too. Geico reported, which obviously is a subsidiary of Berkshire Hathaway, they reported that the severity of claims, so how much they pay out, is going up, as well as the frequency because people are driving more. Huh. See, and that's something that you wouldn't think about, like, right, the price of oil dropping, what does that have to do anything with insurance? But if you're an auto insurer, it's kind of a big deal. And if you're a health insurer that's insured all these people that are in accidents, it's kind of a big deal. Right, exactly. And it, I would have never, you know, it's not something that when you look at a car insurance company, you think, oh, man, I better worry about the price of oil. But the lower it goes, the more people tend to drive. And it makes sense. Yeah. Um, another one that people don't really think about, um, because I think most people don't think about reinsurance, which is, again, those insurance companies that insure insurers, uh, is natural disasters. Um, so, I think, I want to say, was it 2014? Was that the year of the tsunami? I can't remember. There was a year that there was a ton of natural disasters, and there were a few reinsurers that just went out of business. They just like couldn't handle the claims. Right, exactly. And it, it goes so deep, too. So, you could go and look. There's a small insurance company based out of Massachusetts, Safety Insurance, that for years has had a just absolutely stellar underwriting record. They do great in car and home insurance, but then they had something like seven or eight feet of snowfall in Boston. And what can you do? You know, there's nothing you can do about it. It's just bad luck. Mm -hmm. But for an insurer, bad luck isn't a very good thing. No, and they do the best they can to mitigate these risks with, with actuaries, but especially when you are gambling on something like good weather. That's that's when you you kind of have to assess what your risk tolerance is, as hilarious as it is to say for insurers. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. No, it's it's not fun, and I'm I'm kind of glad that's not my job because <laughs> at the end of the day, weathermen can't predict the weather ten days out, predicting it a year out or ten years out. I I can only imagine the difficulty in doing that. Yeah. So so let's talk a little bit about risks that are more common, I guess, across different companies. So um, for insurers, insurers can do can go one of two paths, right? They can either choose to specialize in one thing, right? Like maybe auto and like RV and boat insurance, just like modes of transportation, or um, they could choose to specialize in a lot of different things. Is Are there advantages or disadvantages to either of these? Well, I think there's advantages and disadvantages to both. So, if you think about a very specialized insurer, so going back to safety, for instance, the danger with them is that most of their premiums are written in, the, in New England. So if it snows in New England, you know that's just a bad year for them. If they have a lot of snowfall, they have a lot of losses. So there's geographic risk there. On the other hand, if it doesn't snow or you know winter is very mild, then it's a great year and they're just partying hard like it's 1999, right? Because <laughs> no no one's no one's getting in car accidents. Beautiful weather, it's fantastic. They're just printing money, and then to some extent, being more diversified can be kind of it, it can be good, obviously, because different, you know, one risk won't put you under, won't put an insurance company under. But in the same token, it's very hard to get the incentives right when you have multiple lines of insurance under one business. Right. So, right. if you think about it, so let's say there's a company that has a property, say a car insurance company and a health insurance company together, and you have executives leading the whole, you know, they lead both sides of it. Well, how are you going to compensate them for underwriting performance at one when they're only responsible? You know, how are you going to compensate them for underwriting performance at the car insurance unit when they're only responsible for the health and life unit, for instance? 